Welcome to Crafty Hints. I'm Chantel. I'm so happy to have you here today. Today we're going to be doing some Kirkland dupes. As we're coming into the Christmas season, I think we want to decorate with that high-end look. But let's face it, our budget isn't there. Let's get crafty. I started with this sign from the Dollar Tree. I thought it was such a cute barn. And it reminded me of something I saw on Kirkland's site. So I used my heat gun and I don't think I really needed it. I just needed to pry this up. And turns out this wasn't held down with glue as much as it was staples. So this one, they stapled it from the other side. So I just continued to loosen it up and pop it off. And then we'll just cover that back later. I used some of Waverly's Crimson Red Chalk Paint. And it just needed one coat. Next, I went to my Cricut and I made this Merry Christmas. As you can see, or you will see, it'll be similar to the Kirkland's text that they used. Now, you can definitely use a chalk marker or, you know, a paint pen or if you're great with a brush and paint, oh my goodness, more power to you. My hand isn't quite that steady. So this could definitely be done that way. You could also use some graphite paper and trace that out. You'll see later in this video that I do try my hand at just writing it out instead of using the Cricut as I did here. So I just did the numbers one through 25. And as you can see, my five snuck off there. It just didn't want to come with that carrier sheet. And I'll show you my little crafty hint here on how to add that back on and make sure it's lined up. Gosh, I just love that crimson red by Waverly. Um, I think they do have a version of Apple Barrel that's very similar, but I just love that this goes on with one coat. Okay, so what I did was use this little tool. They come in a two-pack at the Dollar Tree. I used that for weeding some of my vinyl also, and then I like on the back side, it basically has a little squeegee on the back. Okay. Next, I took these skewers and I'm just going to measure my barn. And we'll do that for both of them. This is going to be, as you probably guess, an advent calendar. And this was my take on it. It is not exact to Kirkland's, but oh my goodness, our budget on this is amazing in comparison to what they're going to charge. I took some antique wax and I did a light coat. You could definitely do more. I put it on a baby wipe and just pull that through. So instead of rubbing it on there and then taking some off, this does it all at once. And I just do that to the skewer and then I have four larger beads and then two medium sized beads. I'll show you those just a little bit closer in a moment. But basically, the larger beads will be the caps on each end of the skewers. And in the middle, one of the beads will just slide back and forth. These are just some of the wooden beads I got off of Amazon. Next, I took a piece of scrap wood and I'm just going to paint that in plaster. Oh my goodness, you gotta keep an eye out. It's kind of funny. This was actually like a bed. Um, oh, like the slats that go on a bed and they're all strung and stapled with fabric. A neighbor was throwing it away and it was just sitting there. I just thought, gosh, what a waste of like, I don't know, 15 pieces of wood. So that's what I've been doing. Okay, I took this mineral and I'm just going to dry brush it. This is just one of those paint brushes in the hardware section of the Dollar Tree. And I don't really wash it after I'm done. I tap it all out, making sure it doesn't have any excess paint in there. But it really gives it that nice, worn, chippy effect. 
And now I have a little star bead that I had painted in the plaster also, and I'm just going to dry brush that. These are just, it's a pack of the Dollar Tree of stars, and they come in like gold and bronze and silver, but I just painted them this color to match our barn. And here we are. I'm just going to measure this and get the right placement. So deciding how far that skewer needs to go into my beads. I don't know about you guys, but I'm on a budget this year. Well, I am every year, but especially with, you know, the economy the way it is, I want to be able to decorate with new items and, you know, make some gifts that people will actually want to get. So we'll have some more videos coming up with those in mind. Okay, see how simple this is? Just glue it on each end, measure it, just making sure you've got the placement down and a bead on each one. On theirs, they have like an arrow pointing down um, to show what day it is until Christmas. And then you can slide the bead all the way to the side if you're on the next row. But I just did a slider bead and then we're going to glue the stars on there. I thought the stars kind of point down a little bit and, you know, it's kind of like a Christmas star. All right, just gluing that on there. You could definitely use wood glue, you know, on the ends to cap that off. And then, you know, use some hot glue to attach it and use some, um, some E6000 or um, some instant hold. Oh my goodness, why can't I think of it? Super glue. There we go. All right, let's just glue this back on this other side. And just get that placement correct. Now, on the one you'll see they painted on some snowflakes, but I had these snowflakes from a pack of them. I think I got them at Hobby Lobby. It was like $3 for the pack and it was 50% off. Or maybe it was four dollars and it was fifty percent off, but I love to do snowflakes because you can use them for both Christmas and winter. They'll carry right on. And I just chose a couple different ones. So again, I used the plaster on them, and then I used a little bit of mineral to just distress them. I am loving this. It is so cute and a budget-friendly way to do this. Okay, next I had taken some tumbling tower blocks, gave it that same effect, and this is just going to give it a little bit more stability. So we'll straighten up our barn and just make sure it has something to lean against. <gasps> Look at that. All right, I'm gonna show you the one from Kirkland's in just a second here. Okay, it was on sale for $48.74. It was normally $64.99. Look at that, how did I do guys? Let me know. Leanna from Leanna DIY was so sweet to invite me and all of our friends here to join us for a Christmas collab. So right below, you'll see a playlist and it'll also be in my description box. And you're going to want to visit all of these ladies channels and subscribe. They are fabulous. I know that they are going to have some amazing Christmas inspiration. So hit the playlist and just follow it through. Okay, I decided I was going to make a wreath that I saw on Kirkland. Now you could use the foam form or the metal, metal form. And I grabbed this ribbon at Walmart. It was 30 feet for just under $5.
You could also use the ribbon from Dollar Tree. I liked this one because the edges had black on it and so it wasn't that shiny red that Dollar Tree had. Now I glued it to itself and I'm just wrapping it around and then I'll glue it to itself nice and tight every few times I go around. But with the wire in the edging, it holds it nice and tight. And again, we're just going to go over the whole thing. Now at the end, and I actually suggest do this at the beginning, grab some wire. I wrapped it around this paint bottle to make a loop. And then I'm just going to take that and wrap it right around itself a little bit to make sure it's secure. I would do this first so that you can do it, you know, and then wrap it a little bit and then come back around. But it did turn out just fine the way I did it. Okay, that's good and sturdy. So now I'm just going to wrap it around the wire right here. And this is what they used on theirs was a wire loop at the top. So I'm trying to make it as similar as possible. My greenery, I just used from different things I had. I even grabbed a little bit from some of my fall foliage. Um, but if you've watched any of my DIYs in the past, I like to grab a new garland each year and I continue to grab pieces from it year after year. So I have, I think about four of them at this point. So this is my super cheap one from Walmart. It was like $5 and it's just a little bit better than the garland ties that you find at Walmart or excuse me at Dollar Tree. They just look a little bit more real. And so I'm just starting to put those together. I got those berries, you know, they're 60% off right now at Hobby Lobby. So you just want to use some wire. So it's just floral wire wrapping it around. That'll hold it much more secure than hot glue. But there are some little pieces that I did just glue to each other because they weren't long enough. The other thing I like to do is I'm, if I'm grabbing pieces off of um, other picks, I will attach it to wire from, you know, some old flowers and things like that. As I clip off the flowers, I save some of that wire. Waste not, want not. And it truly helps in occasions like this. So some of these berries I just wired in. Other ones I, you know, just added like I said, pieces of the picks. So I won't make you watch me put this all together. There's a little bit of eucalyptus like I had in theirs. I think maybe if I do another dupe video, I will show you initially what theirs look like and then what mine looks like and then compare them. But you will see it is not identical, but I think it's very similar. And I do encourage you also to go out, if you go on walks, look for some pine cones. Um, I have a couple places that I like to go on walks and find some pine cones. And I have another little pine tree out back here that I collect them and dry them out. But what a money saver that is. And they just look so pretty. They can be there for fall. They can be there for winter. This is the one from my tree. And oh my goodness, does this tree drop pine cones like crazy. So I'm just adding a little bit of wire. I just wrap that around a little bit and then give it a little dab of glue. And then I can just use that wire and pull it through my bouquet. Okay, so I did them sort of similar on each side. I flip flopped the big and the small pine cones on each side. So, um, you know, it kind of draws your eye from one side to the other. Now I'm just taking my wire and attaching it to the wreath. 
Walmart has a new like rubbery greenery garland that I liked this year. If you can see a little bit of some of that pine, um, I really like that. It, it looks so real. I think there's one sitting in the center of the wreath there. Okay, so I just wire it in a couple spots, making sure it's secure so that, you know, hanging on your door it with a good breeze, it doesn't blow off. And then we'll just make a bow with that same ribbon. I decided the easiest way to do it was to make um, some loops. So I made one bigger one and then the next ones are just a little bit smaller. And so you just basically make... Um, X's so that you know they're diagonal from each other and then just continue to stagger those in that way and then you'll just make a loop for the center now one other thing I learned from myself was when you're putting that on there it probably would have been a good idea just to put it right around the wreath form as well. So it would attach it right in there. But that's okay. I just fed some wire through the back and attached it. But that's another way to attach it, making sure it's very secure. So now you just fluff it all out. And my goodness, wait till you see what they are charging for this. Holy cow! I did see a couple other things from Kirkland's I might have to dupe just, well, I guess if I'm doing it for myself, I might as well film it for you, right? And here it is on my door. And here's Kirkland's. They had it on sale for $74.99, originally $99.99. Holy cow! I think we did a great job. What do you think? Tailored Canvases reached out with me to see if I'd like to share their beautiful canvases with you. How could I say no? They're so beautiful. They've also given me a 15% off code to share with you. The hardest thing was to pick which one. Decided to open my tailored canvas. I have to personalize this. There we go. Oh, look at that. Wow. That is so pretty. That will be perfect in my craft room. I can't wait to show you it up. Oh my goodness. It is beautiful on this wall in my craft room. Okay, there's going to be the discount code down in the description box. It's Crafty Hints 15. That'll give you 15% off. And I'll also link the tailored canvases down below. For our third one, I went with this sign from the Dollar Tree, and they're a little bit bent. Sometimes you got to go put something solid on top of it, flatten it back out. And I'm going to tell you, I goofed. I truly goofed. I call myself out for you guys. I thought, oh, I'll give it a little bit of a distressed look because as you'll see, their sign has... Um, it says Santa Claus is coming to town, and it has Santa, and it looks like it's aged, but... I use this stencil vinyl and I think you guys have seen me use it for a couple of years now. I've never had a problem, but make sure you give it two good coats. I did two good coats of plaster and didn't have an issue. This is my second sign. The other one does look really aged where it kind of pulled up some of the paint, but I wanted it to look much closer to the original. Not exact, but inspired by. Okay. 
Now I didn't have a stenciling pouncer, so I used a sponge brush and it's just fine. I'm using that crimson again and just giving it an up and down motion. If you're really concerned about your stencil bleeding, what you can do is give it the same coat as what you have underneath, right on top or at least around the edges, and that'll help it. So if it does bleed, it's gonna be the color that you originally had underneath the stencil. But I've shown you guys how to reverse stencil in the past too. So this is fabulous stencil vinyl. I will share the link below. I'm showing you here, I found this at Hobby Lobby, so you can put the truck on one end of your sign and Merry Christmas on the other. You don't have to have a Cricut to make your own signs, but I thought that would be adorable too. Okay, I let this dry for, I'd say I let it go for at least an hour. I want to say, I don't know, I get impatient, so I tried for an hour. <laughs> Okay, so what you do is just peel this off. And I just snip some of the extra off so it doesn't, you know, reattach itself to places you don't want it to. And now I'm using my weeding tool and I'm just picking out those pieces. Oh, look at Santa come to life here. Now, this isn't one I can fully share with you because I did purchase this Santa. I googled you know, um, vintage Santas and someone was actually selling this one. But if you look at the one at Kirkland's, it looks pretty close to identical to him. So I just had to buy him. I was originally just going to look for something free online, which you can definitely do too. Look for free vintage Santas on Pinterest or Google. There's a lot of free SVGs or PNGs out there that would work. I can link below. I'll have to try and find, gosh, where I found that. If I can find it, I will link it below. But remember, we've got that playlist down below too, where you're going to get so much inspiration. These are super talented ladies. I can't wait to watch the playlist tomorrow evening. Okay, just pulling that up here. And I won't make you watch me weed the whole thing. That would be so boring. But I kind of wanted you to see for the most part Santa and how that goes. Now there is a little spot over by his eye and I think up in his hat that did just pull up the tiniest little bit. So that's okay. I'll go back and touch that up. And I had a couple little lines that I saw. Um, but as you can see, I didn't give it total full, full coverage and you could even leave it just a little less coverage. You will see in Kirkland's sign, especially around the edges, theirs doesn't have fully the paint. You could also go back and distress it with your sanding block or sandpaper as well. So I just go back in, touch up any little areas that I might be concerned with. And this is just one of those real fine tip brushes that comes with their big brushes. That is my favorite one um, at Dollar Trees. They have a big fat brush and it comes with a fine one. Oh, look at that. Now, they did put a frame around theirs. So you could totally do that. Just grab some trim from the hardware store, but they wanted $93.74 for that. Originally $124.99. Wow. I can't wait to hear what your favorite one was. I grabbed these sleds from the Dollar Tree and they are a little bit larger for ornaments, but I think they would be adorable if you personalize them with your kids' names and things like that. Just hanging from their door could stay up all winter. Um, these will be some cute little winter sleds. This is some Waverly chalk paint in the color Ocean, and it's just a little bit light. And I could have went even a little bit darker than this to match up with the Kirkland's one. But that's okay. I'm happy with the way it turned out. 
Um, so I painted this one in the ocean with a little bit of elephant in it and I painted the other one in crimson. So super simple. Then I, whenever I mix up some paint, I can't let it go to waste, but this is something else you can do. So if you're painting or wanting to do a second layer, grab some plastic wrap and just cover up your paint. So I painted those ornaments, but I might want to paint something else. So I'm covering it up. Now I've got a paint pen and I'm trusting myself to write this out. Um, I practiced with my pencil on the paper. I originally was going to put the pencil on the sled, but I'm going for it. It's just paint, right? I can go back over it. And this will say, oh, what fun. And I'm just looking at it on my phone to see how their font was. Um, some of their letters are a little bit similar to how I write and other ones I had to, you know, kind of figure it out. And with that little slat, it makes it a little bit difficult. You'll also see that the sled from the Dollar Tree, they didn't line it up perfectly center and I couldn't remove it. So I just went with it. It's okay. We're crafting. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're just having some fun. Okay, and now I'm just doing the border. Look at that. See, I can write. Not so bad. I don't love my handwriting, but it's okay. It's similar to what theirs is, and I'll show you that in a moment. But these are a super simple craft. I think on my own, I might add, you know, a snowflake down on the bottom right hand corner. I think that would be cute. I think doing these sleds, you know, they can be super simple. Or you could even make a small little swag going across the top of that sled. I have a bigger sled sign that I was thinking about doing that for um, another sign for Christmas. So I'll do that soon. Now this one with that stick font, I you know did some tape to help line it up. I do go back and fix my eye because it's a little bit wiggly. And I also notice that their eye doesn't have a, a cross around the top and the bottom. That's okay. So I fix it and you'll see that. Now I'm just distressing a little bit with that plaster. And I also did that on the runners. I also went over it with some watered down hazelnut, you know, just first to kind of stain the runners. Super simple. Okay, we're just about done here. We're going to wrap it up. We'll give you the reveal here. Again, don't forget the playlist and to let me know which one was your favorite or which one you might be inspired to do. weren't super expensive. Originally $9.99 on sale for $6.99, but we did it for like $1.25. I don't know, maybe $1.50 with a little bit of paint. I do want to thank you so very much for joining me and wishing you a very special and Merry Christmas to you and yours. Here's a couple videos you might also enjoy. Thank you so much and have a blessed day. Don't forget to hit the playlist.